Okay, folks. The screen that you're looking at now is the GameMaker 8 um, interface. And right now it's on what's called simple mode, and that's what we're going to use for a while. You'll notice on the left we have uh, folders for sounds, sprites, backgrounds, objects, rooms, and then something for game information and global game settings. We're going to be using a number of these uh, items as we start to create our first game. So the first thing basically that you're going to need to do is add graphics or pictures that you're going to use in your game. Those we're going to call sprites. So basically a sprite is nothing more than a picture that we're going to use in our game. It can't do anything at this point. So I'm going to right click on sprites and choose to create a sprite. Now, the naming convention is important in creating a game or programming and we're going to always use the naming convention that makes sense so that you know what you're, uh, you're uh, referring to later in your game. In this case, I'm going to use a lowercase spr as the prefix for a sprite, and I'm going to follow it with an underscore and then the name of the object or sprite in this case. And then I'm going to load a sprite, and I'm going to just for our purposes here use this basketball sprite. Okay. Now, basically, the game I'm going to use as an example is we're going to have a basketball that it's very important that you protect. So you're going to be able to move the basketball around and as things try to attack the basketball, if you click them, you will eliminate them and save the basketball from harm. So the sprite is, is sprite basketball. In order to make the basketball do anything, we need to create an object. In this case, we're going to create an object. I right clicked on object. And again, I'm going to use a naming convention that makes sense, obj underscore, and we'll still call it ball. We have to, that's not an underscore at all. Okay, now we have to identify what sprite should be associated with the object, and in this case, again, sprite ball. So now we have a sprite called ball, which is the, just the picture. Um, you might use that for more than one object later. But in this case, object ball is utilizing that sprite ball as the graphic representation. But we still haven't told the ball to do anything yet. So the first thing we're going to do is start to tell the ball how to move. So I'm going to double click on the ball. And this brings up the object properties, which involves events and actions. Okay? This is where we define what the ball can do. So I'm going to start real simply with an event where if I click on the left arrow key, the ball should move, and in here, these are the different tabs for things we could do for actions. The red movement one is basically the simple, just move in a direction at a speed. I'm going to choose move left at a speed of 4, and I'm going to hit OK. So right now, my ball, if I click on left, should move to the left. However, I don't have anywhere for it to do that yet. So I need to create basically a level or a room, and I'm going to do that here where I'm going to right click, create room. Under settings, I'm going to give this room a name, rm underscore level 1. And personally, because I know that my sprite is 32 by 32, I like for the grid to follow that so that the sprites fit where they're supposed to. And I'm going to give it a caption, protect the basketball from harm. Okay? And then I click, and then actually what I want to do too is go back to here. These are the tabs for the room. There's objects, settings, backgrounds. I haven't dealt with the background yet, but under objects, this is where you get to place objects in your room. If I maximize this, I'll see the true size of the room. I'm going to click my basketball there. Now in theory, my room has a basketball in it. I told the basketball what to do when I press the left arrow key. Let's see if it works. I'll press play. And I press left, and it starts moving left. But look, it's still moving left, and it's off the screen. It has, doesn't know how to stop or anything like that yet, so we're going to get to that. Okay. Now, <clears throat> as a general rule when you're programming, it's very important to do things step by step and test them 
each step or each couple of steps so that when an error happens, you know where the error came from because it worked up until a certain point and then stopped working. So I'm going to do that pretty systematically so that you see how that works. So I'm going to go to object ball again. Now I want to at least tell it that when I do not press a key or when there's no key being pressed, the ball should stop. Okay. Now again, I'll test this at this point. I move left, I let go, I move left, I let go. This is shaping up to be a very exciting game. Okay, now I'm going to go on to the next couple of things. I'm going to go, when I go right, it should move to the right at a speed of four. When I go up, it should move up at a speed of four. And when I move down, it should move down at a speed of four. I would generally not do more than that before I test it again. Now I'm going to test my game. So far it should move in all four directions and stop. Left, stop, right, up, down. Excellent. This is the time where you could clap.